Hi there. So today we'll be talking about the reductive technique of uh, building a cardboard calligraph block. And I've got a couple of examples here. This one was carved out of a piece of, um, I don't know if it was map board, it looks like some sort of um, chipboard. And I drew the design on here and then used an X-Acto knife to cut away the low areas of the block. So I don't know if, how well you can see that in relief, but the only um, areas that are still raised are the areas that have the black marker on it. The rest has been torn away. And you can see how some areas are torn deeper than others. There's a chance that some of these areas may pick up ink when it's rolled. So you, you can be aware of that um, and use that deliberately if you want to have some mid-tones pick up um, in some areas, that would be fine. This one also was cut from a scrap piece of uh, mat board. And um, in addition to cutting the, the cardboard into various depths here, another thing that, that happened on this one is I added some really thick gel medium or Elmer's glue to intentionally create sort of this textured surface that, um, I'm trying to get it to show in the video, there we go. Um, so that when the roller goes across this, there's going to be some variations in the way the ink picks up here. So that might be another thing that you explore as you're doing your sample plate and testing out this method is intentionally maybe cutting some areas deeper than others so that some ink will pick up there. Not as much as we'll pick up on the white raised areas of the block, but um, that will just give a little bit more textural variation to the image. Now we're going to be uh, starting with the piece of mat board and removing the areas that we don't want to be inked up. And in this case, there's a lot of the, bl the plate that's going to get cut away. I'm debating still about this area. This, this will be the most difficult to cut because I've got really small black lines that I'm trying to preserve in those areas of the design. So what I might find out is it's just too hard to try to keep those little raised um, areas that will ink up. And I may end up creating a second block that becomes the value of the deck and um, then just treat the chairs and the background shapes on this block. So it would be um, just completely cut away in these areas and then I'll have a second block that is designed to line up with this block so that I can print this larger negative shape area in a third color instead of just having it be black and white. So we'll see how that goes. I think for the demo I'll just start on um, cutting some of these inner areas and um, We'll take it from there. So as you're cutting, one thing I really want you to think about is how durable those raised marks are going to be when it comes time to ink them. So if you um, are thinking about the plate sort of in cross sections, so we're looking at it from the side of it, as you're cutting down into the plate, your line will be most durable if you can create sort of this buttressed um, ramps that lead to the top of your plate. So um, even if you have a very thin line, as long as there's a nice wide wall holding it up, it should be durable enough that it won't break off as you're rolling the block. Now if you cut straight up and down, that is quite a bit weaker. And so there's a chance that those little bits will accidentally break off or um, fold over um, or chip away as you're rolling across it or as you're cutting. The very worst thing you can do is actually undercut a line. So um, you, 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 don't, you definitely don't want the, the bottom part of the wall to be narrower than the top of the wall, or it really is likely to just break off and um, drop off of your plate. So as you're cutting away a line, so for example, with this leg of the chair, I'm going to be cutting the right side of the leg of the chair with the blade angling this way, and I'm going to be cutting the left side of the chair with that blade angling this way so that the base of that relief um, part of the plate is wider than the top surface is. And I have to be even more careful the thinner the lines get. So if I'm cutting these little tiny rails over here, as I'm cutting on the right side of each one of those little black lines, I want to angle the blade away from that black line down into the white areas. And then on the other side, I need to angle the blade the other direction. So it takes quite a bit of focus. Uh, you should do your cutting when you're uh, well rested and you've had enough caffeine and, and focus and you're not distracted or tired. And um, just really uh, be as, as careful as you can. If you accidentally cut away a piece of 
card that you didn't mean to, uh, you can quickly glue it back down. So put a little bit of glue on a brush or um, on your finger or a slip of paper and, and just um, you know glue that piece back down and it should hold up pretty well. We'll be sealing all of these cardboard blocks later with the gel medium anyway and that also can help work as a glue to hold uh, loose bits down. But do your best as you're cutting to not accidentally cut away parts that you meant to keep. So let me put on my um, my eyeballs here and I'm going to start with Let's, I'm going to start with an area here. So maybe I'll um, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more. And um, okay, that should give us a little bit better view of what I'm doing here. So most of my lines are straight. I'm going to be using a ruler as a guideline and have a smaller one. This one's. And. slanting inward a little bit. Use uh, the sharpest exacto blade you've got and it's probably better if you can instead of just bearing down really hard and taking a chance that you'll snip off the end of the blade it might be better to use a little less pressure but go over the same mark a couple of times in order to cut it deep enough. You'll also be less likely to slip. Now you may need to slightly overcut the corners so that the piece drops out nice and cleanly. And um, here we want to cut this direction. I'm going to cut along this edge of the chair so that the top of each one of those shapes drops out cleanly. I feel like this blade is already starting to get dull. I'm not sure if I nicked it against the ruler or what, but I'm going to um, check the blade there. The other thing you can do if you don't have a lot of replacement blades is get some really fine grit sandpaper, like 320 grit, and then uh, almost rehone that blade like it's a, like it's a, um, a knife and um, you can reuse the blade then if you don't have a replacement on hand. I cut the wrong part right there, <laughs> we'll see what happens.
Okay, so check to make sure you've cut away all the edges before you start picking out the low areas. And you can use just the corner of the blade or if you have a some other um, device like a needle that can help pull pull up parts. You want to catch the edge there and you're going to kind of peel up layers. And you should have better luck. I need to keep that black part down so I'm going to I'm going to have to glue that little piece back down. It's starting to lift up. So I can just take a little bit of glue on um, dab of a piece of paper and put it under the piece that I'm trying to get back down. Use the X-Acto knife to kind of glue it back on. So this is a time-consuming process. I'm certainly not going to be able to do this whole plate in front of you, but I will um, get started on it and do a few areas and then I'll cut the rest of the plate off camera and we'll come back and proof it and see how it's working out. But anyway, just take your time. You're peeling away the white areas, remember. Leave the leave the black areas of the design intact. I forgot that line. Let me cut it again. I missed this one too. So the deeper you cut the lines, the less problem you'll have with the low areas inking up. You might intentionally allow some of those low areas to ink though if you want a uh, mid-tone there, you can um, leave a little bit of that texture where it can print. So I'm going to keep working on this for a while and we'll come back and take a look at it once more of it's carved away, but hopefully you can start to see the areas where there's some lower sections of the block. and. To test how the progress is going, you could do a crayon rubbing as you get more of a cutaway. So I, I'm going to need to cut these a little bit deeper before I, I take that step, but uh, just kind of pick away layers until the low areas of the block are deep enough that they aren't going to be picking up a lot of ink from the roller. I'll stop there.